Well, the United States is now approving vaccines for COVID-19, so I guess that's it. Pandemic over. Everything's going to be just fine. Okay, no, we all know that's not true. This is about to be the biggest public health project in our nation's history, as an ineffectual and apathetic federal government oversees the campaign to make sure about 330 million people get their access to a vaccine for a virus that the same federal government has spent the last nine months telling them isn't that big of a deal. By the way, as of this recording, about 300,000 Americans have now died from this disease. No big deal. The logistics of getting 330 million people vaccinated would be overwhelming regardless of what situation we're in, but this is definitely not the best of all possible worlds. Uh, There's the federal government, as mentioned, but there are also many states led by conservatives particularly who refuse to admit that the virus is a problem. And so we already know that they will be incompetent, if not actively detrimental in this effort. Take Kim Reynolds, governor of Iowa, for instance, who resisted taking any measures to stop the spread of COVID and even bragged about that on election night, saying that the Republican win in the state was a validation of our balanced response to COVID-19, one that is mindful of both public health and economic health. They reported about 25 COVID-19 deaths on election day, but last week they recorded nearly 200 deaths in one day, with thousands of new cases appearing every day. Reynolds has finally agreed that a mask mandate might be helpful. Wow, you don't say. And this is the genius who is now in charge of getting 3 million Iowans, Iowans? Iowans vaccinated. Yikes. Conservatives aside, uh, there's also one other big stumbling block in the path of this rollout, and that's determining who gets the vaccine first. Because you can't just simultaneously vaccinate 330 million people, even if you already had that many vaccines made, which we definitely do not. I've already seen people getting on edge about this. Um, One doctor on Twitter wrote, Everyone needs to follow the COVID vaccine prioritization in every state. If elites and athletes get it earlier than prioritized, it will erode public trust. Which is true. Absolutely. No one should get the vaccine earlier than prioritized. But uh, it's a bit trickier than just that. Like, who decides who gets prioritized in the first place? Well, that's left up to each state to decide. We're hoping that all of them will adhere to the CDC's guidelines, which say that the first doses should go to frontline healthcare workers and people in long-term care facilities. The former group is most likely to be exposed to the virus since they're actively treating people who are sick with it. And the latter are people who are most likely to die from the virus if they do get exposed. COVID-19 has absolutely torn through senior living facilities and decimated our elderly population who are already at high risk due to their age and other illnesses. And then they end up trapped in these small spaces with an infectious disease. It's a recipe for disaster. After we vaccinate our frontline workers, though, and our long-term care residents, things get even trickier. If we are just basing it on who is most at risk, the next group should probably be prisoners. Prisoners are similar to those in long-term care in that they are trapped in a very unsafe environment where the virus spreads easily. But Americans tend to absolutely hate prisoners, um, in part because our country has set up a capitalist system in which rich people get richer by sending poor people to prison, leading to a culture where we are taught to look down upon criminals and the poor, uh, and we expect people to go to prison regardless of what laws they break. And once they're in prison, we have absolutely no sympathy for them. We see them as less than human and not deserving of all of the human rights that we bestow upon others. Even people who follow me on Twitter express this exact concern that prisoners would get the vaccine before others, a sentiment shared by the governor of Colorado, who said, there's no way it's going to go to prisoners before it goes to people who haven't committed any crime. That speaks to a certain gut instinct of fairness. Well, that guy committed a crime. I did not. 
he shouldn't get something that I can't get. But we already give prisoners things that we don't give the average law-abiding American, like housing and food and health care. We accept that if we are going to force a person to go to prison, we have a certain expectation to keep them at a standard of living that we have all agreed upon. We even look down on countries where the prisons are complete hellholes. We think of those societies as savage, even though our prisons are often not that much better. So when we decide that someone needs to go to prison, the understanding is that they will have a minimum standard of care there. We do not or should not sentence people to prison with the understanding that they will die horrible, untimely deaths there, or that they will contract debilitating illnesses there. They are humans, and that is inhumane. I already have more rights than the average prisoner. Uh, I have the right to live in my own home, to vote in elections, to move about freely while wearing a mask uh, for the safety of those around me. And because of those freedoms, I enjoy a very low risk of getting COVID-19. Prisoners should absolutely get the vaccine before me. And if it helps, this isn't just for basic reasons of humanity. When COVID-19 spreads around prisons, it inevitably works its way into the surrounding community. A study published in the journal Health Affairs found that back in April, one in six COVID-19 cases found in Illinois were linked to an outbreak at the Cook County Jail. The same is true of athletes. The initial tweet I was responding to mentioned that if elites and athletes get the vaccine earlier than prioritized, public trust will be lost. I think it's telling that they lumped athletes in with elites. Um, It's true that professional athletes have a certain amount of privilege in our society based on how much money they make and their celebrity status. However, there are richer people than them who made the ultimate decision to reinstate professional sports in the midst of this pandemic. By doing so, the owners of the teams and the media companies that broadcast these games didn't risk their own health so much as they risked the health of the athletes who would be playing. While the risk of contracting COVID-19 while playing sports outdoors is probably low, uh, and leagues such as the NBA and the NHL have tried to insist upon a bubble environment, there have still been outbreaks as athletes inevitably hang out indoors, eat together, and interact with people outside of their bubble when they're not playing. Dozens of athletes across sports declined to return to play due to those factors, often incurring financial loss in order to do so. Uh, Alina Della Don uh, got a doctor's recommendation to skip the WNBA bubble, uh, but the league rejected her request and insisted that they would not pay her if she didn't play. It is worth noting that her reason for requesting a medical opt-out was due to what she described as chronic Lyme's disease, which, as I've talked about in the past, does not actually exist. It's a made-up disease. But that doesn't matter here because COVID-19 can kill anyone, whether they have comorbidities or not. And even if death isn't the outcome, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that even recovered patients can end up with lifelong heart complications and other problems, something that no one wants, let alone a professional athlete. So we as a society pressured professional athletes to risk their health for our entertainment. But because they're rich celebrities, or we think of many of them as being rich celebrities, we're upset if they get too high of a priority with the vaccine. Here's the straight dope. This virus doesn't care about fairness or whatever your gut is telling you is moral and ethical. If someone is at high risk of catching this virus, of dying from it, or passing it on to others, then they should get priority because that is what will stop this pandemic most quickly. Have you heard of a Pyrrhic victory? That's where you win, but in the course of winning, you suffer such a devastating toll that it's really like you didn't win at all. That's what will happen if we get bogged down in arguing things like prisoners don't deserve the vaccine. It's not about who deserves what. 
It's about stopping the pandemic as soon as possible and giving the vaccine to prisoners early will do that. If you win by deciding that only the righteous should get the vaccine first, then you will in fact lose as the virus continues to race unhindered through prisons and stadiums and through frat houses where a bunch of privileged assholes are still doing keg stands and through Walmarts where ignorant conservatives go without their masks and then breathe into the mouths of essential workers who are forced to stand there and process their credit cards. All of those people need the vaccine as quickly as possible, and they need it way earlier than righteous little me, uh, who has been sitting quietly in my home for the past nine months, getting my groceries delivered and learning how to bake sourdough bread. Please keep that in mind as people and news organizations and podcasts continue to politicize what should be apolitical. Please don't fall into the trap of weighing who deserves what and whether or not you are personally being treated unfairly. Nothing about this is fair. So let's just use science and rational thinking to get it over with.